Telefon. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Life with Lonnie. I have a prophetic word. Um, so let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for your spirit to come upon me. Lord God, give me wisdom and revelation, Lord God, and teach me how to prophesy your word. I pray, Lord God, that this word will go forth and um, pierce the hearts that it needs to pierce, oh Lord God. I pray that change would come about this word in the name of Jesus and that you would ultimately be glorified in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. So this is um, a word that God gave me just now. He said that he's up in the ante. And so um, with a lot of us that that's um, been chosen to go through the wilderness, to go through this refining process, um, the reason why God chose us is because he wants us to be the prototype or he wants us to be the example for the generations to come and so he's establishing a new type of relationship with us he's establishing new requirements right well not really new but he's resetting the standard okay um and so for years and years generations have watered down the requirements of god right and god chose a select few to reestablish his holiness in the earth, okay? And so a lot of us that's in the wilderness are commissioned to do that. That's the reason why this wilderness has been so tough and that's the reason why we've been pruned and we're breaking and we're being molded so that we can establish his holiness in our marriages, in our society, in our purpose, in, in everything that we're doing, we will be the prototype or the examples that he sends out to change the world, okay? So one of the things that God wanted to really address with his people today is um, making the holy things common, right? We make the holy things common. We, we've... Um, we we've gotten so used to god that we treat everything about god as if it's common some of the things that god highlighted was um dreams visions miracles um uh writing like prophetic writing um just anything that has to do with god has to do with encounters with god those things should be treated as holy the same way that we go out of town and we we go to the um to the gift shop and we get we get um travel memorabilia right but at the same time we we want to commemorate a um an important event that happens in our life that's the same way or if not more that we should react to encounters with god god said that his people we are all guilty of treating the holy things as if they're common or profaning the holy things okay whenever the children of old would have an encounter with god sometimes they would build an altar right to commemorate that moment where they they encountered god and to this day there's still landmarks that people can refer to this is the day that this person met with the lord and this is the moment and because you know the veil is torn that looks a little bit differently but now these altars should be built in our heart we have got to make it um our business to honor god's holiness just because he's a he made himself available to us that does not mean that he, he's worth less okay just because it, he made it easier for us to commune with him, he made it easier for us to contact him. It doesn't mean that he's less holy. And so um, God is um, challenging, all right, and holding the children of God accountable to this. We have to change our relationship with God to give him the honor and respect that's due. As the children of God, we need to value our God. We need to value the moments that we have with him. Okay? We're not we're not building physical altars, right? If God leads you to do that, that's fine. But we're not building physical altars, but we're building spiritual altars. Okay? 
the same way that you celebrate your birthday. There should be days. There should be time. If God raised you from the dead, that should be a holiday for you. You know what I'm saying? To actually commemorate, to actually honor and value your encounter with God. The day that you got anointed or the day that you heard God or the day that you met God face to face. These things should be treated as if they are special, as if it's not common. And so that's what God is wanting to hold us accountable to. Do not treat the holy things as if they're common. Everything. And so even journals, um, he also brought this to mind. If you have a prayer journal, there should be nothing else that goes into that prayer journal. And anything that you want to dedicate to God, it should be solely for God. Treat it as if it's holy. Because you're dealing with the holy God. And God is really adamant about this you're dealing with the holy god you have to treat him as such if there's a place specifically um um dedicated for your prayer and your worship with the lord nothing else should be done in that spot don't, don't treat god's holy place right as if it's common does that make any sense however god is important to you he's going to document that if he's coming to you right then you won't be able to see his face. But if you find him important, right? If you value the Lord, he's going to honor your value, your fear of him. He's going to honor that. He's going to set you apart. He's going to lift you up because you honor him. Any moment that you spend with him should be commemorated. It should be valued. It should be a, a, an event in your life and you treat it that way. Any dreams, like I said, you had a dream, whatever. If you keep a dream journal, like nothing else should go in that dream journal. Because you're documenting a moment where you spent with the king of kings. Um, Yeah, and so th this is something that God really wants to convict the church about. Like he wants to reestablish how much he's worth. He wants to reestablish his time with you. His time should be shared with other things. His time, like he wants that alone time. He wants that priority in your life. He wants that priority in your life. If you go on a date with the Lord, nothing else should 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 um, interrupt that. You shouldn't be standing God up. Okay? You're treating, you're treating the holy things as if it's common. If you made an appointment with the Lord, keep your appointment. Treat it as if you made an appointment with the King of Kings, with the Holy One. Does that make any sense? The Holy One. How can we honor the Alpha and Omega? How can we treat him as if he's holy? How can we treat him as if he's omnipotent? How can we treat our master and king as if he's valuable to us? Every encounter should be treated as if it's special, as if it's holy, as if it's unique. It can't be contaminated with the common things. It can't be contaminated with our mindsets, with our emotions, with all those things. It shouldn't be contaminated. If you have a special time reserved for the Lord, I seek him in the morning. That time cannot be contaminated with anything else. Treat it as if it's sacred. Treat it as if it's worth something. And you will see a difference in your walk with God. You will see how God treats you. You will see how you move up the priority list. Okay, God wants to reestablish the fear of the Lord amongst his people. That's the word. Um, the comments are open. People of God, the comments are open. If you have, if you need help, like reestablishing your relationship with God, you need pointers, you need coaching, you need um, just prophetic insight, whatever it is to get you back on track, to get you on your way to your journey with God. Please reach out to me via email, lifewithlana at gmail.com or lifewithlana um dot com my website you can book a session whatever it takes to get you to where you need to be in on the right track okay and it's you know obviously it's just a, a cultural thing you know it's been our, our our reverence has been watered down from generation to generation and he's ready to do a new thing in his people those who are prepared those who want to honor him those who want to be called by his name those who want to make a difference those who want to walk in authority and power this is going to be the key 
This is the key. This is the key. If you honor God and you lift him up and you call him holy in your heart and you treat him as if he's holy and not mundane, as if he's holy and not a common thing, but every encounter you value it, you value your time with him and you show him, you show him that you value that time. You show him that you value your access to him. Your life will change. That's the word of the Lord. Your life will change. That's a guarantee from God. So um, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent, oh God. There's a lot of things that we don't even realize we do because we've been indoctrinated by culture and tradition, oh God. We're grateful that you're giving us another chance to show you how much we love you, to show you how much we want to honor you, to show you how much you mean to us. I thank you, O oh Lord God, for giving us all wisdom and revelation to treat you um, with the respect that you deserve, to treat you with the fear that you have earned. Lord, to treat you with the honor and the reverence and the respect, O oh God, that you deserve because of the title you hold. We thank you, Lord, for your patience. Teach us, Lord, how to love you. Teach us how to honor you. Teach us how to respect you. Teach us, Lord God, how to be your people. Teach us, Lord God, how to commune with you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, Doc. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Life with Juan. I am back with another word. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I invite you into this atmosphere, O oh God. I pray that you would reign and reign supreme over the airwaves, O oh Lord God. Say what only you want to say, God. I pray that our hearts and our minds would be open and yielded to you in the name of Jesus. And I just pray that your word would bear fruit in our lives, O oh God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right.